G'day Ziggy D here and in this video I want to share with you guys my first impressions and gameplay overview of Arcage. Arcage is a new-ish sort of uh, MMO that's currently in alpha here in the West. It's been translated over from Korean and it's a pretty, it's, it's a bit of a different beast in the MMO world. It's something that's been dubbed a sand park MMO. So it's kind of a cross between a theme park MMO and a sandbox MMO. So imagine, if you will, that World of Warcraft and EVE Online had a baby and then tossed that baby out into the world and forced it to raise itself. There we have Arcage. So it's pretty interesting and it's pretty different. Now some of you guys that have been following my channel for a while probably have seen me try a few different MMOs. And uh, I am not really a big MMO player. I don't enjoy MMOs all that much. But I think the main reason for that is I mostly have only been trying theme park MMOs. Now I've played a tiny little bit of World of Warcraft, I've played Neverwinter, I've played Guild Wars, I've played Final Fantasy XIV. And none of those I could really stay in and stay interested in for very long. Now, the only one I, out of all of those, and I've played other games as well, like Ragnarok Online and RuneScape and things like that as well, out of all the MMOs I've ever played, the only one I've ever hit max level in was Guild Wars, and the only reason for that was because I leveled entirely through World vs. World, which is essentially this open world PvP sandbox environment. Now, it was pretty limited in what you could actually do in it, uh, basically just go in there, PvP siege castles and stuff like that, you know, pretty, fairly limited overall, but there was enough freedom in that to pull me through to max leveling a character, and to keep me interested for a couple months. So, everything else, never max leveled in. The reason is, I've discovered over time, is that the normal generic theme park questing uh, burns me out pretty bad. I, I just get burnt out. It's just not for me. A lot of people find this very enjoyable. It's just not something I find myself uh, too enjoyable. You know, I play a lot of action RPGs and RTSs, which are more smaller bite-sized things. In an action RPG, you kind of just jump in and start killing stuff. You don't really have to, like, read through quests and figure out a lot of that stuff. So, I don't know. I guess I, it's just my gaming ADD growing over the years. But uh, Arcage is a game that's actually got me fairly interested, fairly excited, and my mind is starting to whir with the possibilities. And this is not something that's happened within the MMO before. So I've been playing this for probably about 30 hours now, and I've been doing a lot of the questing and stuff. This game blends the theme park and sandbox MMOs together. So there is the questing and dungeons and things like that, and I have you know, had a reasonable time with the quests. They're pretty well done overall. I've spoke with a few people that are more experienced in MMOs than myself, and they said that the questing is pretty well done. It's got some pretty nice uh, elements to it that make the questing not too grindy. Uh, firstly, uh, it's well laid out, like the stuff's pretty uh, immediately obvious, even if you want to skip over all of the text and just read basically the quest text in your journal every now and then for some specific things. It's all pretty obvious. Even if you have to use a specific item or a specific monster in the quest, you you can uh, do it from the actual quest objectives menu on the right. You just click the little icon and it pulls the item from your inventory. No need to sort through your inventory for the correct quest item. So that's pretty nice. It makes things nice to do. Now it's also got this underachieving and overachieving feature where if you uh, don't like the quest, that's like kill 10 or do 10 of something, then you can just do 5 and turn it in. You'll be like, screw it, this quest is boring, I'm gonna turn it in. You take an XP penalty, but you get it over and done with and you can move on with your day, which is awesome. I love that. <laughs> I've used that a few times. But uh, there's also the overachieving feature on the other end of the scale if you really like the quest, and sometimes I do. I'm like, I find a bunch of monsters that are really fun to kill or something like that, and I'm like, I'm gonna kill more of these guys. You know, it's kind of fun anyway. And by doing so, you can also discover extra hidden quests and things like that too. Yeah, there's hidden quests. It's a pretty cool mechanic. But uh, basically, if you, say, kill 15 instead of 10, or get 15 items instead of 10, then uh, you turn it in and you get extra XP. So you get rewarded for overachieving on the quest and it can have extra effects and things like that. So that's pretty pretty cool. It makes the questing system pretty doable for me, and uh, I've gone through to two characters now on 20 to 20, which is, a, you know, less than halfway through the leveling process, and I've been enjoying it. Now, the good news is, uh, you can at any time in this game just say, I'm done. Done questing, done dungeons, don't want to do any of that theme park stuff, and basically just turn them off. You can just turn the quests off. You can do this at level 1, but I think most players will probably go something to like level 20, 25 or something like that, where the quests start to pull you into the, some of the sandbox features, and then that's usually a nice spot to sort of transition over into sandboxy stuff, if you like, because you will start uncovering quests that allow you to do things like, well, they give you, they introduce you to the aspects of planting farms and harvesting and uh, crafting and doing trade runs and, you know, things like that, building your glider and stuff like that. So, 
That's all pretty cool. Now, this is what gets really, really excited. The sandbox elements of Arcage is, is about freedom. There's so much to do in this game. Firstly, there's a, you know, there's a ton of different professions that you can engage in. So there's growing trees, logging trees, growing food, logging food, you know, oh, harvesting food, you don't log food. <laughs> uh, harvesting uh, alchemical ingredients and growing them, uh, crafting woodwork, you know, metalwork, metallurgy, mining, uh, and crafting boats, fishing, uh, piracy, commerce, you even get XP for trading in the auction house. So if you want to play it as an auction house simulator, you can actually level your character to 50 just by auction housing. So you get XP from all of these different things and they contribute to your character level. So it's impossible, it's possible to uh, simply fish from levels 1 to 50. You'll need to spend a little bit of time getting the materials together to craft your fishing rod, but uh, once you've done that, you can pretty much fish all the way to 50. So it's pretty cool, that gives you a lot of freedom there. And it is a very uh, sort of, as I said, it's a sandbox game. It gives you a bunch of these different tools, a lot of different stuff to do, and that's just like, have fun. There's a lot of open world PvP in the game. There's some safe-ish sort of zones early on, though when I say safe zones, if you plant uh, foods and trees and things like that that you want to later harvest in an unprotected, untaxed land, so if you just go up in the mountains and plant some trees, which you can do, you can plant stuff anywhere you want, then uh, other people can come along and simply chop those trees down and get the experience and take the goods from them. So there's kind of this interesting meta game where you'll have to, uh, you either make a decision between, do I want to plant stuff in a protected but taxed zone? So I have to pay gold to the government to uh, keep your materials safe. Or do you try and find some sneaky spot in the mountain through clever, uh, you know, clever trapezing with uh, your mounts and your gliders and things like that. You know, trying to find really sneaky location, hidden away, tucked away in the mountain somewhere where you can plant a bunch of trees and hopefully they don't get snatched away because, you know, Everyone wants that wood so they can build their boats. So then, you get to build your boats, and you can use those to either do trade runs, where you craft these trade packs, which are like a hundred of a certain good, or they're a mixture of different goods to craft a specialty trade pack, and then you take them to a faraway location. Now, obviously on your journeys, you can be ganked by other PvPers, by other players in the game. You can be killed by the Kraken if you're going over the ocean, and you know, you can run afoul of many different things and lose your trade pack. However, if you make it, you're rewarded with large amounts of currency, depending on the difficulty and length of your trading run. So that's one thing you can engage on. Another thing you can engage in is piracy, of course. Being on the opposite end of that, uh, pirating other people with their trade packs, which uh, this is something I'm very excited to get into, either the trading and the piracy sort of thing, or, you know, putting together trade runs. The thing that gets me excited about this game is I start thinking about all these different things that you can do and the freedoms you have, and I start to think of, wouldn't it be cool to build a guild that had, like, two different segments? Like, one where you uh, had a bunch of people, like, managing sort of these, uh, like, protecting this large zone where they could grow freely a bunch of these different crops and then use those crops to craft trade packs. And then the other half of your guild was centered on uh, having a bunch of galleons together and a bunch of trade boats and stuff, and uh, going across the ocean to a faraway land and protecting these people doing these trading runs and then making a crap ton of money from doing that so having this protected in this organization it's a very very exciting concept so this game might not be for everyone if you just are interested in a game for the questing the dungeons and the and the raids those things are there there are in the game but i wouldn't play arcade for those things i think most people that have you know been playing around in endgame for a while that i've talked to have said that you know the game has those things they're decent but they're nothing spectacular now you've got games like wild star to look forward to for things like that i think but uh, if you really want like an open world PvP environment, uh, open world, you know, doing whatever you want, I know Amy wants to grow farms and fish and do overland trade farms in like some of the trade runs in some of the more safe zones. Uh, or if you want to simply commit a bunch of crimes, get sent to jail, break out of jail and become a pirate and go live on the pirate island and pirate other people and steal all their trade goods, then you are free to do that. And if you want to build a castle in the shape of a penis with a little cottage house sitting on the mountains, or a, ship, a, a giant party boat for your entire guild to dance on, then you are free to do any of those things. So the game has me pretty excited. I'm very eager to see more, and this is unusual for me in an MMO. Usually after, well, in ESO, for example, I was burnt out after seven hours, and uh, in Final Fantasy, I got burnt out after two weeks. I'm still very interested in seeing more of Arcage. So I'm going to be streaming the game a lot, and probably covering a lot, because there's so much to cover in this game as well. That's a big part for me as well, as a YouTuber and a streamer. I'm like, I get very excited about games if I can also think of a bunch of content I can make for that, because it's not only playing it is fun for me, but covering games is fun for me. And this game has so much I could potentially make videos on. So I'm very excited. Let me know what you guys think, whether you're playing Arcage, watching Arcage, or interested in checking out some more of it. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and have a bit more insight into what the game is actually about. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.